K Sarah Sarah, whatever will be will be. The lads are going to Wembley. Come on, happy days for the EFL Trophy Final 2021. A 5 3 win over Lincoln City on penalties tonight after the score remained 1 1 after 90 minutes. So, lads, Sunderland are in the final against Tranmere Rovers. Dodzy, how are you feeling after that nerve wracking penalty shootout, mate? Right, buzzing, of course, is the only word that really comes to mind. Just happy that we got over the line and got it done in the end, really. Um, looking forward to the final now. Uh, I would say we are favourites going in against Trammy. I know Dino made a fair point beforehand saying that Trammy is still at the Oxford, so a decent team. But it's nice to be going into a game where we've, we've played a team who's top of League One, and we're now going into a team that, that's played, that, that's, that's a League Two team. I think something that's important as well is that we won on penalties tonight. And that's going to breed a lot of confidence if it does come down to that next month in the final. Mm. Dino, uh, even though the game was pretty much as flat as a pancake, to be honest, uh, those penalties, it, it was nerve wracking seeing some of them go in, to be honest. I mean, some were really poorly struck, but also from a goalkeeping point of view, at least I would say two or three of them should have been saved at least. What do you reckon? Yeah, uh, the pens were, they were, they were, hor they were horrible penalties. The best penalty was Power's first one. Other than that, the rest of them were terrible. I mean, Lugo Nine's pen should have never went in. I think their keeper would be really disappointed, but I don't mind that because it went forward. Uh, Lee Birch should have saved two, one with his legs. Unfortunately, it just went under the bar. And the one where it wasn't, don't get us wrong, Lee Birch's one was right in the corner, but he, sh he should have probably still saved it. But hey, I'll, t I'll take it every day of the week. I mean, when them hit the bar, I was like, that puts a bit of pressure on us now because we can't, we don't want to miss. If we don't miss, we win. So it puts a lot of pressure on us. And when they keep up, couldn't just had Chris Packard hands. I was so glad because Chris Maguire should have missed as well. It was unbelievable. But hey, I'll take it every day of the week. We're, back to, we're going back to Wembley and we're going to get this trophy once and for all. Mm. Well, Tranmere Rovers stand in our way. It's about getting the job done on the day, the final three weeks' time, Sunday the 14th of March. Heartbreaking that it looks like none of our fans will be able to go, but we'll be cheering on the lads the best we can in front of our, our screens, giving all the support that they 100% deserve. But back onto the game itself. Uh, it, it started the first five minutes. I thought we were the most energetic side, but then we slowly allowed Lincoln to get back into the game and they look really good in possession I thought at times tonight I thought their midfield of Max Saunders and George Grant in there their, their star man this season were controlling the game really well and um, they got the first goal for their rewards tonight it was um, a header which Lee Burge debatable should he have done better to parry it out for a corner it went into the path of Anthony Scully who put Sunderland not Sunderland Lincoln City a goal up uh, Dodzy, would you say Burge could have done better with that one? And would you say overall we deserve to be a goal down tonight? You'd expect your keeper at the save that and smother the ball and, and not parry it out. Um, and I am quite disappointed that Burge did end up spilling the ball. Um, but I think what's more important is that Scully came in completely unmarked on the right-hand side and there wasn't even any defenders challenging him. Now, of course, we all know who plays on the left-hand side of our defence and that's really not a surprise. So I was quite disappointed that Birch didn't smother the ball. You would expect the keeper to just catch it from there. You wouldn't expect there to be any problem with the kind of shot that it was and he managed to get over. You just kind of expect them to, to save it or at the very least parry it into a different area, not right into the area that the right midfielder is running into. You know, you parry it to the, to the side in the hope that, that, that it goes out for a corner, not right in front of you, which is what he did. So I was quite disappointed in Birch, but I think the, the, the larger problem lies with McFadden. Mm -hmm. Just I don't know where he was, but he was he was nowhere near Scully, um, who, who came in completely unmarked and, and had pretty much an open goal to finish at, really, unchallenged and unmarked. Mm. But Dino, would you agree the changing point of the, ga of the game for in terms of a tactical point of view for us is when we brought Jack Diamond and Chris Maguire on for Josh Scowen and Dan Neal? It just injected a lot of pace into the side what, what we were lacking in the final third and in terms of our attacking play on the flanks we, we looked well and in terms of creating opportunities to get the ball into the box and one of our one of them paid off a brilliant ball in and a fantastic Charlie White header once again like he did at the weekend 
Well, I totally disagree with uh, Jack, what he said about Lee Burge. I mean, I totally disagree. The bloke was on the penalty spot who took a full volley at Lee Burge. Lee Burge, you, I mean, you're only 12 yards out, so you haven't got much reaction time to react. It's bobbling across the floor. It's going in the corner. He's got his hand to it, and the play, player's tapped it in. But at the end of the day, the player should not have the whole penalty box. He had about eight yards of space yeah. to have the first shot anyway. Lee Burge done what he could. And the players nicked in. I mean, for me, I think it's very unfair. It's very unfair on Lee Birds because he still made the save the first time. You can say tip around the post, but sometimes you don't have the time. You've just got to react. And the rea- reaction was he saved it, but he couldn't push the ball further out, which is unfortunate. But for me, the changing point in the game was bringing Mc- McGeady into centre midfield or centre attack in midfield. Because when we brought Diamond on, I'm guessing we changed the formation. And McGeady was in the centre and McGeady ran the show. He was getting shots off. He was uh, taking players on. He was b- trying to be creative. And he created the goal. Once again, the, the partnership of uh, partnership of McGeady and Wyke worked the treat. And don't get us wrong, Wyke should have scored before the goal. He had a diving head on. He headed it straight yeah. to the floor. That should have been a 100% goal. You'd think a man in form would score that. He didn't. But yeah. then he gets, he gets onto a harder cross which is at a harder angle and somehow puts it in. It, it, it was it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it went in after he had missed that. But hey, I thought the changing point was McGeady, hundred percent McGeady in the centre. He, he just he just looked different. We had pace on the wings and diamond and uh, whoever was on the other side. Uh, I don't know who was on Good. Gooch and then and then Gooch came off O'Brien. So yeah. yeah, I think the turning point was McGeady going into the centre, hundred percent. Yeah, and also I thought Chris Maguire had a decent game when he came on as well. He was providing the crosses really well into the box. But back onto the goal we scored, um, Charlie White, what a fantastic header that was. That reminded me, Dino, you you know more on this, of Quinny back in the day in that over 100-point season, just glancing off the centre-half to head it into the far corner, what he used to do week in, week out. That was just an unbelievable header, wasn't it? It was, yeah, and no one can say the keeper should be getting that because it was the the ball, the spin on the ball was taking it more into the corner. It was a it was a really good cross by McGeady because he normally cuts in and shoots, but he didn't. He crossed it, and Charlie White's done really well to get his head on it because he was at an awful, awful angle fight for the header, but it's went in, and I'll take them every day of the week. Charlie White is on form, and like you say, he's injury free. He scored the goal. That's mm. the decision Lee Johnson made to keep him in the team and look what he's done for. Yeah, he's, he's just such a a massive, massive player that we've got this season and a massive game changer as well because even though I think he didn't necessarily have his best game tonight, Charlie Wyke, he's always in the right areas when you need him most. And I could tell if after those previous two chances he missed, a goal was coming. It just needed a brilliant ball in and him to get on the end of one brilliant cross for him to find one of his headers going into the into the net and the rewards paid off. Fantastic. Dino, you want in? Yeah, can I just say as well, I mean, you've got to think these are top of the league, this team. They played one they played a strong team and we had a makeshift defence. Yeah. Of, I mean Bailey Wright had to go off in, back. Yeah, Bailey Wright have to Bailey Wright had to go off for injury, brought McLaughlin on, McLaughlin's a right back, Max Power isn't a right back, and Luke O'Neill isn't a centre back, so well done to them for only conceding the one goal, I mean, credit goes out of that defence tonight, because they played against the top side, and kept them the one goal. Yeah, Dodsey mate, the final at Wembley, against Tranmere Rovers in three weeks time, what's your thoughts going into that, that EFL trophy final of 2021? I mean, let's not underestimate Tommy. They've done a fantastic job to get to the final and they beat the great side in Oxford yesterday, a side who are really informing our division. However, one thing I would say is that we've just beat the side that, as you say, top of the league, and we had a makeshift defence out because of people cup tie and injuries and such. We've just beaten the, the side who was supposedly the best in League One. They are top of the league currently. We are now going to face a side in the division below. To me, we should have all the confidence and all the momentum and we are 100% favourites going into this game. Um, I'm not Team we should underestimate Trammy. They're going to give us a hard game. They're not going to make it easy. We know they've got players who can hurt us because they've done it to other teams in League One. But my point is, look who we've just beaten in the semi-final. We're now taking a step down and playing the team. Not only are you on our top of the league, but actually in the division lower. Um, so I think we've got to expect to win that game. And we have to take it again like we did like, like we did tonight as seriously as possible. 
and um, make the strongest lineup um, and, and completely go for it. Because as I say, I do think we are favourites. Mm. Do you know what Jack was saying there? How important is it in that final that we don't take Tranmere? Is it lightly, and we we just like treat them? Like it is going to be a very, very tough and physical battle. I mean, the, the tweets I've seen on social media, especially last night, saying the worst nightmare scenario they can think of is former Sunderland man James Vaughan getting a late winner for them in the final. But it's about us turning up and getting the job done and using our quality to great effect, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, don't get us wrong, a lot of these lads will still have nightmares of the final against Portsmouth because it's a lot of the same players, i.e. McGeady, Charlie Wyke, Luke O'Nine, and they'll want to rectify that. And they're playing a, a worse opposition, no disrespect, but they are worse than Portsmouth. And we've just beat a team who are better than um, Tramia and Lincoln. So the players will want to rectify what happened in the first season 100%. So for me, you go out and you do exactly what you've done today, you battle it out. You battle, you battle as hard as them because them are going to want to prove a point. Them will want to beat us so badly because we're a league above them and we're Sunderland as well. To, it's at, it's in, at Wembley. Who doesn't want to win at Wembley? And it's for me, it's our turn to win. It's our time. Yeah, there'll be, there'll be no fans in, but this is what makes it. This is what's going. This is a typical Sunderland thing. They're going to win yeah. at Wembley when there's no one there. It's our time. It's as simple as that. I don't care what Trammy are going to do. We're going to beat them. It's as simple as that. Yeah, 90 minutes away from our first trophy since 1973, honestly. Uh, the feeling's absolutely brilliant. But we'll be uh, keeping you update, updated as much as we can of what content we're going to bring to you guys for that final on Sunday, the 14th of March. But enjoy the feeling now. Crack open the cans. Sunderland are in a Wembley final against Tranmere Rovers in the Papa John's Pizza Trophy final of 2021. Happy days. How are the lads? A 5-3 win on penalties tonight. Keep the faith. Sudden until we die. How are the lads? Come on. So, Cunts for career.